Now we're going to continue our simulation discussion. We have uh, notice that we have three groups. We have group one has a mean, the first sample has a mean of 99.6. Group two with the first sample of 94. Group three, which is at 104. But notice that all the means, uh, the population means, are 116. So we're, we're sampling from a, a population where the truth is known to be 100 and the standard deviation is 16. Now, we can put in these numbers and we basically play God. In fact, we don't, when you're doing a study, you don't know what the truth is. And the whole point of statistics is to estimate and discover what the truth is. And as you can see, we never really pick it out exactly. These, these are off from 100 with a standard deviation of 16. And um, so our goal is to estimate it, get some confidence intervals, and uh, we'll see what those are, those are doing. So notice we had come up, we used the z-scores, we came up with a mean and a standard deviation. The n is uh, based on, you know, it's the, we have an n of 10. Our standard error for this particular sample is um, 6.3. And that actually is calculated. We use the standard deviation, divide by the square root of n, to come up with that. And we have our our confidence intervals, which takes the mean and, and subtracts um, the t, t value times uh, the uh, standard error. Now, notice here we've used the t inverse function. Some of you have t dot inverse, um, but t inverse is a legacy uh, is a legacy function, and it works just fine. And we want 95% confidence intervals. So this 0.05 gives us the T for a two-tailed T test at, um, so a, a basically a 95% T. And the degrees of freedom are N minus 1 times the uh, standard error. And so we are subtracting from the mean, so that's the lower confidence interval. And the same formula with a plus on the mean gives us the upper area. Now, here, we in this column, we measure the overlap and ask the question, does our confidence interval, in fact, overlap the true mean? And so the true mean is 100. The confidence interval, the lower end is 85, and the upper end is 113. So in fact, we are overlapping 100. So this standard error allows us to construct this confidence interval. And in this particular case, it overlaps it. Now this is the sum of the columns of overlap. <clears throat> and notice it's 961. Now the number really should be 950 because it's a 95% confidence interval and there's a thousand. So nine, 950 is 95% of a thousand. We can see <coughs> in um, group two, we hit it exactly. That's kind of unusual, but we did 950. And in group three, we overlapped in 949. Notice here's a zero. The confidence of the mean that we found in this third random sample was 92. And uh, the standard deviation was 9.9. .9. So that's a little small. So the lower confidence interval is 85. The upper is 99. And that does not overlap 100. So in this case, our sample, if this had been the sample we had drawn for group 3 with a true mean of 116, we would have, we would have not estimated correctly. There is nothing in the world 
keeping you when you do a study from missing the true mean. It's just we want to make our confidence intervals wide enough so that it doesn't happen very often. In this case, we're defining not very often as 50 out of 1,000. So our 95% confidence interval is this. And we would, if we ran this uh, rather than 1,000 samples, an infinite number of samples, um, we would find that the confidence interval overlaps the true mean 95% of the time. I would like to add one more comment about the standard error. Remember when we talk about standard deviation, it's the mean of observations. When we, uh, from a sample distribution, when we talk about, so up here we have 19.8 is the standard deviation of this 10 samples uh, that has a mean of 99.6. Now the standard error is kind of a hypothetical construct. It is the theoretical uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. So we have a, mean, a population mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. The, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of potential means for this population is that standard deviation is basically the standard error where uh, we're estimating. So when we estimate this 6.3, we're estimating uh, the potential standard deviation of the sampling distribution of these means. Now let's see what that means. So in this particular simulation, we have a thousand means. We've we've uh, simulated this sampling of ten one thousand times, and um, the standard deviation of that, the standard deviation of that, is five point zero. You can see here's the standard deviation of this column is 5.003. Now over here we have, and that's the standard deviation. Here we've calculated the standard error. We've calculated this standard error a thousand times. The average of these standard errors is about the same as the standard deviation of the thousand means. I mean, they're both pretty close to 5.0. Um, it's a sample, so even if it's a sample of a thousand, a uh, 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 thousand different samples, it's still not exactly the same, but it's pretty close showing that this calculated standard error over the long run is equivalent to the standard deviation of this sampling distribution.